There's so much need in, in the world, especially in Tondo. And it was such a... <laughs> hair-standing. It's like going to a good spa. You know, a bad spa, you like, wow, well, see all these things, but nothing happens. But when you go to a good spa, you come out, I'm ready for the world! Well, it was because of, of the, the underprivileged that they serve, uh, Metro World Child Serve, and where Grace Mission partner called for us to meet the need. And therefore, we decided to uh, get the Grace Group, our Grace Group and the Woman of Grace into adopting a child each. The opportunity came when the um, Grace Mission approached us to say, would you like to participate in a mission trip, a short mission trip to the Philippines? And we just enlisted ourselves into it. One of the special programs was to meet up with our sponsored kit. It was concrete jungle, but it was also related to slum because dead rats everywhere, the congested uh, drainage and the stench there was also not very conducive for us. But we were able to see that there's a need. Um, they were all in very tight quarters, living quarters. They were, in, uh, they were in a state of homelessness. In Singapore, we are blessed. The children are really blessed with everything that they could have and access to. It's in Tondo that these children don't have the access to good school, to good living, uh, to uh, enjoy uh, childhood days. And it actually hurts me to see them in this condition. Uh, we will be able to celebrate her birthday for the first time. She did uh, tell her grandparents, when can she celebrate her birthday? We can make a difference. We can make a difference into these lives, uh, even in small portions. So we will continue to write to them, to pray with them, to send them whatever they need, you know, to be able to enjoy their childhood days. It's really, it will enrich you when you see them and uh, it's really it's a blessing that we can be there to bless them. We are called to make disciples, we are called to reach out, we are called to uh, share of uh, His love. We are made to be conduits of His love and we should uh, participate in whatever areas of mission work that's available to us uh, in Grace Assembly. And a small thing that you do makes a difference to the lives of those out there. The fear was that, uh, am I ready to go? Because uh, I have no idea what a mission trip is all about. Um, and I was also afraid that I might not be good enough to be in a mission trip. Uh, I was also given uh, the opportunity to talk in one of the house cells, which freaked me out because suddenly I am speaking to people I've never met. I really felt the world's weight on me. What was amazing was, Every day, we started with devotion and we'll submit the, the day to the Lord. And we were just reminded to be open about it and to be open to the Holy Spirit's prompting. And <laughs> hair standing. And it's, it's amazing because God did what He usually does. He showed up through the Holy Spirit. He opened the hearts of the, the children. And when we asked, for auto call, uh, they came forward not because they knew what was the right thing to do, but they came forward, they bowed down, and they cried their hearts out because they really wanted to be touched by the Lord. It was a reminder that we as adults need to be like children. It's written in the Bible, right? That we need to open our hearts and just rely on Him, knowing fully well that He is our loving Father and that we can come to Him with anything that we have, anything that we are going through, anything. No matter what you think that, maybe this one, I'm too shameful, or it's too much, or it's... No, anything you have, if you have like the children's heart, just come forward and just uh, submit to Him. When we came to the church to watch that Sunday, the service, we just sat there as one of the congregation. A seven-year-old, I think six, seven-year-old girl, she saw us coming in. And in this church, the men sit one side, the women and children sit the other side. And mostly children are in front. And this little girl saw me from way in front there. And then she looked at me and I smiled. And the next thing I know, she's walking towards me and she came over and gave me a hug. <laughs> I mean, if, if that's not a welcome, I don't know what is. And uh, I knew I was in the right place. There was so much love to share. It's amazing because I, I went there with the team hoping to 
you know, show the way to the Lord and uh, talk about the Bible verses and uh, bring about more the presence of the Lord into their lives and all that. But in turn, I'm the one who was blessed. And I speak for the team as well. We will finish late at night, we'll pack up, we'll come back, we have a post-mortem and we will be like, wow, what just happened? We, we wanted to minister to them, but we found ourselves being ministered as well. And that's beautiful. That's, uh, that's amazing. That's, that's a miracle. So, fellow Gracians, who like me, sat down in the, in the pew, the benches there and thinking, ah, I don't think I'm good enough. I'm not ready enough. I, boy, it's a mission trip. I scared to go. I don't think I'm adequate enough. God will equip you like He equipped us, the team and myself. I've gone through that struggle and I've gone for the mission trip. I've come back again and I'm telling you now, it's like someone who is addicted to smoking. Uh, he tells you, don't smoke because uh, we'll get lung cancer. And you'll believe him because he's gone through all that and he can tell you firsthand experience what is happening and what is not and what is good for you. So I'm telling you now, go for at least one mission trip. I am ready for the next <laughs> mission trip. And plus, uh, if you go for a mission trip, you get two NTUC vouchers. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs>